Morning. Morning, everybody. How are y'all? Good. Let me uh let me get Zim going on my phone so I can go mobile today. We'll get started. All right. There we go. I think that takes care, takes care of the feedback. Morning, Scouts. How are y'all? Cool. All right. So we'll get started. Start on time, end on time, right? So, what we're going to do today, um, try to make sure there's not any feedback coming off my phone. More Zoom problems. Um, keep your feedback off my phone. You all catching feedback or do I sound okay? Thumbs up? Cool. Okay. Let me go to my notes. So homework was... Finish putting together your plan. Start putting together your kits. Get your first aid stuff taken care of. And uh, adults and older scouts, start working or finish your ICS training. So I hope everybody's on target. And I'm gonna give you some incentive this morning to get that done. Cause I want you guys to not only be prepared, but I want you to get the award. Too many windows. So, disclaimer. I own a company called Safe Prep. That's why I'm interested in preparedness. I have been since I was a kid. Earthquake. Y'all prepared for that? Um, so, as an incentive to finish this award, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what my company does. And I'm not going to try to sell you anything at all. I'm going to offer some free stuff to you. So, this is for scouts and parents. Uh, if you complete the award, and I'll need proof, okay? So I need a, either a picture of your pen on your scout or yourself and uh, or a picture of your signed application that you give to your uh, club master to turn into council. So what I'll do is I will, uh, I'll review that plan for you and make some suggestions and give you some preparedness tips uh, to uh, maybe further your preparedness a little bit. I told you guys one of the things that I enjoy the most, let me look at the camera instead of myself. Noah, are you sleepy? Okay, buddy. So there's several different levels to preparedness and it's just kind of where you want your family to be. It's a personal decision. So I'm gonna show you some of my stuff today uh, to kind of show you where we're at and uh, I'm, I'm never where I want to be. I'm always trying to do better. That's what we should be doing as scouts, right? So, but uh, I'll give you all the information on that. So I'll review your plans and give you some additional tips and pointers and stuff absolutely for free uh, for everybody that completes the award. So even after this is over, I'll be there to stick with you. Um, go back to my notes. We will have a, another Zoom meeting at uh, 11 for question and answers, just like we did last week. It's not mandatory. You can come over and do that if you want to. Uh, I will give you all a link in the, uh, in the 
chat before we leave. So uh, if you want to go to that, be sure you stick around to the end and I'll put that link in the chat. We had three or four people jump in last week. Everybody's unmuted. Everybody can talk. Scouts can talk. So like I said, not mandatory, but uh, so part of the award process is that you have to give a presentation uh, about your uh, preparedness. So you can do that with your parents. Or you can do that with somebody that's in your unit and you can do that to me. So if you guys, uh, if the scouts want to give a presentation to me, we can do that uh, through Zoom. It will not take long at all. I just want to see what they've learned and give them a chance to talk about what they've learned. So, um, and you'll have all my contact info for that, but we can set up Zoom meetings for that, okay? Let's get into some cool stuff and then I'll go back to my notes. So we're gonna try this mobile thing again. Um, and see if I can uh, take you guys out in my messy garage. So here's the disclaimer. I gave you the disclaimer on my business and the help I'm willing to offer. I'm gonna give you the disclaimer on my garage. It looks like a tornado went through it. Y'all ready for that? Uh, my wife will not let me buy a shed yet but i'm working on her i'm doing my best uh so i'm going to show you some of our preps that we keep at our house and um uh, maybe give you guys some ideas about what you can do to increase your preparedness so let me get in here and see if i can make my phone the host Make host. Yes. I'm the host now. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Justin. Okay. There we go. Now I'm unmuted. I swear, I swear this, this is, is impossible, guys. I tried this last week and it didn't work. It's just, uh, I even practiced this before the video this morning. Let's see. There we go. Everybody see my phone moving? Thumbs up. Let's try this. If you can still see me and hear me, thumbs up. Okay. okay. Let's go out the garage and then remember ignore the garage and what it looks like. I'm gonna open the garage door so there's a little more light. Craig, if for some reason you can't hear or see me, send me a text so I know. So I'm just gonna show you guys a few things that we keep in our house. And remember I said there are different levels of preparedness. And one of the things about preparedness is we really don't tell people how we prepare. We kind of keep it to ourselves. So uh, this is not something that you wanna broadcast, but I trust you guys. So I'm gonna kind of show you what we have, okay? So we just wanna protect our investment and in everything that we've done. So when it comes to food, everything that is in your Cabinets in your house and in your fridge is part of your food preps. Now remember that the power may go out and that you may have to use those 
uh, that food that's in your refrigerator. Uh, but everything that's in your cabinets and your cupboards is part of your preparation. So be sure you count that when you're preparing. Now we talked about basically being prepared for a two week emergency where you couldn't get out and go to the grocery store because of the pandemic, you didn't want to get sick. Uh, the grocery stores are closed or can't process payments or it's just dangerous to go to the grocery store. So this is our additional food storage. So there's two ways that you can prepare as far as food preps go. Okay. Um, and, and every situation is a little bit different. If you have younger kids, there's going to be some things you're going to have to buy that you wouldn't buy if it was just four adult, you know, two adults living in the household. So if you, there's two ways to go about it. You can buy things that you normally use, just buy more of them and rotate them out. So, uh, when we spend money on preparations, I don't feel bad about that, that, that money being spent because this is stuff that's going to get eat anyways. And this is stuff that's going to save us an additional trip to the grocery store. So if we're out of ketchup, I don't have to go down to dollar general. I have ketchup out here. So you just need to be able to keep track of it. Uh, now, so that's one way buy things that you normally eat, just buy more of them and have a two week supply at home at a minimum. And you can go beyond that. And we've tried to here. The other thing is to buy foods that are good for long-term storage. So that is rice. Um, that is beans, uh, that is canned goods. So, uh, that is freeze dried fruit foods. Those things are good to invest in. So we've got a little bit of both because listen, my kids are not going to eat rice and beans if we can't get to the store and don't have SpaghettiOs and meatballs. So we have SpaghettiOs and meatballs. I have cheese ball. So this is something that, that my company can do to, to assist you is give you a list of things that are, that are smart to buy. Uh, you can also build your preps based on daily, uh, daily uh, calorie intake recommendations. So there's a whole bunch of different ways to go about it. So let's go from food to water. So everybody's got a hot water here. That's an emergency source of water if water was to be cut off and you didn't have preps of water. So most water heaters anywhere from 30 to 50 gallons. So remember that that's water that you could drink if you had to in a long-term emergency. But there are other ways that you can, y'all see me trying to navigate my garage. So you can store water and there's a whole bunch of ways that you can do that. And this is just what has worked for us so far and has also worked for our budget. So obviously you can buy bottled water, okay? And keep that and use that. My wife drinks that anyways. I don't drink anything but Coke. Stay healthy, y'all. Now, if you look here, I have a 15 gallon water storage container. These are, the blue are specially made. They're BPA free. So you won't have harsh chemicals leak, uh, uh, leaking into the water. So this is 15 gallons. Uh, you can buy the full 55 gallon drums, but once you fill those things, it's wherever you put it. You're not going to be able to move it. So that's why I went with this in multiple uh, 15 gallon containers. So this is another container. This one is, I believe, six gallons. This one right here. And there's another way that you can do water short term, but you have to rotate it out and it's pretty cost effective. We go through milk like crazy at my house. So you can use the milk cartons. The better thing to use is juice cartons. And I'll tell you why. Milk cartons are designed to uh, decompose and degrade. So if you're gonna store water in milk cartons, you're gonna need to rotate that out every six months. You're gonna have to be able to keep track of dates. Now, one easy way to do that is look at the date that is on the milk bottle. So that'll be able to tell you when that milk expired. So that's your start date on when you filled that up because nobody wants to drink expired milk, right? So uh, you're gonna need to clean that milk carton out really well. And uh, like I said, rotate those out every six months. So just keep track, but it's, an, it's an, a way that you can start prepping water today. One gallon per person per day. So one gallon for every person in your household per day is the standard recommendation for having water prep. So that start a gallon at a time. You can also use the, so here's the, here's the regular old milk carton. Just clean it out, fill it with water. These are a little better because they're a little thicker. This is the juice bottles. 
So you don't have to rotate these out as much because they're not going to leak or decompose. Okay. So that's good for water preps. Let's show you a few more things that we have. Okay. We have a, uh, basically a pandemic or a contagion box. Okay. Different levels of prepping. This is just what we do. That has a lot of things in it. And uh, the same uh, YouTube channel that I post all of these videos to is the safe prep channel. And it has a, breakdown of everything in our contagion box okay disinfectants ways to build an isolation room in your home uh personal protective equipment ppe uh, gloves those kind of things so if you want to know everything that's in here you can go watch that video um so uh some additional things that we have to have because i have children i have a two-year-old and a six and a half year old is for the two-year-old still wears diapers so we have to have uh, extra stock of diapers and wipes we have a cat so we have extra cat food i also have extra cat litter because if something happens i'm not leaving my cat here he's coming with me she's coming with me um now we're not hoarders but what's some of the things you that have been difficult to find during this situation now that is toilet paper so we have a reasonable amount of, of paper products we have paper towels and we have toilet paper so uh when we go to the store we buy whatever the allowed minimum uh, maximum is now uh, just that way that way we're prepared if something should happen now uh, if if you can't get toilet paper there's a whole bunch of other things you can do an old t-shirt the closet uh, clothes is probably your best option but uh, I hope nobody's in that situation right now if you need some toilet paper that bad give me a shout and I will gladly share some with you okay so uh, let's talk about a couple of more advanced options let me talk about this first you guys are in such a good um, situation because you're scouts and you go camping and all of that equipment that you use for camping can be used for preparedness. I'm still here. Just making sure y'all are still hearing me. There we go. I'm back. So, if you have propane heaters, those are good. If you have tents, those are good for multiple reasons. Building a microclimate inside your house. If the power goes out and it's in the middle of winter, put a tent in your living room. Eat the inside of that tent, it's gonna heat up a lot faster than it would the entire room or the entire house. So all of your camping equipment, your sleeping bags, your flashlights, your extra batteries, your first aid kit, all of that stuff can be used for preparedness. So don't feel bad when you're spending money on scout stuff, because we've all done it and we do it every year. We spend tons of money on stuff. It doubles as preparedness. So I uh, feel a little less guilty about spending that money. So a couple of more levels of preparedness that you can look into. And that is being, being able to have things that you need and being able to move at the same time. So I'm in and out of ambulances and multiple vehicles during the day. So I pretty much have a man purse. I call it a MERS. This is it right here. Now within this, I have what we call an EDC or an everyday carry. Okay, so these are things, uh, I have everything in this bag with me at all times for basic preparedness and survival, okay? So most of that is in this little Maxpedition kit. Let me just tell you what's in it. Compass, whistle, uh, water purification tablets, caffeine pills, uh, multiple lighters, uh, and then I have ferrocium rods for fire starting, tinder, and lots of other things. So uh, I also have a way to, I always have a container with me. If you want to look up some stuff on survival, look up the 10 C's of survival, okay? And a container is one of those things. So I have one of these little containers that stays with me all the time. So I always have a container to hold water and a way to purify water. Uh, a multi-tool, I always have that with me as well. Now, Another level of preparedness uh, is uh, we talk about bug out bags and we also talk about get home bags. So I work in another county 
if something were to happen and I was not able to, to get home quickly and I needed to walk and I needed to survive, there are things that I have with me. Now, once again, a lot of the things that go into this bag not only go with preparedness, but they go with scouting. So whenever we have a camping trip or, or an overnighter or something or a hike, I can, I can move things from my preparedness gear into my scout gear. And when I get home, I can move it back. So uh, a very good investment. And let me show you guys, this is my get home bag. So we have uh, food, uh, ways to start fire. I have a three ml, a three mil garbage bags that can be used for shelter. I have backup power for my cell phone. Uh, we have, uh, and part of my everyday carry as well as always having a car cell phone charger with me and a wall cell phone charger with me, plus an external battery that stays charged. That way I can communicate with people if something were to happen and I wasn't able to charge my phone through an outlet. So, um, this bag is also part of my, my bug out bag. So if, if we were to have to leave our home for whatever reason and either go camp out in the woods for a few days or evacuate. Uh, evacuate our home. We live close to the interstate. So uh, another disaster situation you can think of is <clears throat> say there's a hazmat incident down here at exit 89 at Epsom Road in 24. And uh, I am part of Alert Rutherford. So if uh, the emergency management agency decides to send out an alert that you need to shelter in place or evacuate your home, within 10 minutes, I can get out of my house with everything I need. That along with my gear that's already packed, and the list that I have in my house of stuff that I need to grab before I leave. So different levels of preparedness you can, you can, uh, you can go from. I'm a big gear guy and a bad guy, but there's multiple levels of preparedness you can get into if you choose to homesteading, starting a garden, learning how to hunt fish and trap and dress and all those things. So learning how to build shelter. So, uh, if, if you're wanting those survival and preparedness tips, that's something that I, I can provide to you for free because you're scouts and I'm a scout and I love you guys. So, uh, I'm going to go back over here and see if I can't, uh, get the computer going. Stand by. There we go. I think that worked. Let me turn that all the way down. Everybody see me? Wait. Wait, wait. Stand up. Y'all see me now? Wait. Okay. So if you have guys have questions on that stuff, that's just some additional levels of preparedness that you can look into. This cannot be done overnight. You have to, um, I don't have the money to buy everything I want or the time to do it. Um, or the permission from my wife to do it. So you have to do it a little bit at a time, but like I said, you're all in a good, good position because you're scouts already and you have camping gear, so. There we go. Okay. okay. So let's talk real quick about some of the other requirements for the different levels. Summoning help during emergency. So this is for everybody, even adults. So uh, 
Obviously, the number to call during the emergency is 911. You can call that from a landline. You can call that from a landline. 911 operator immediately knows where you're calling from. So it's going to give you an address. They're also going to ask you for that address because they have to confirm everything they see on their screen. So be patient with 911 operators. Uh, give them the information that they need. Look at them get to that portion of the narrative. And then they'll ask you what's going on. Most dispatch centers can simultaneously dispatch units to your home, police, fire, EMS, uh, as they're taking that call. So don't think that they're wasting time. They, if, if we get the wrong address and send the ambulance or our truck to the wrong house, it's not helping. So be patient with us. I'll always stay on the line with the 911 operator until they let you go. Okay. If you call from a cell phone, it's going to triangulate your position, uh, give them a general area that you're in, so you still really need to verify where you're calling from. So before you call 911, try to have an idea of where you're at uh, and how to tell people how to get to you. So that's paying attention to interstate mile markers, state out mile markers. And if you're out in the woods, uh, knowing what entrance you came in, parking lot you parked in, uh, what trail you went up, those kind of things. Working with another agency, okay. And the other, uh, the other thing, guys, with nine one one is is scout. If you don't have a cell phone with you and something bad happens, a medical emergency, a fire, you need to go tell an adult, okay. And let him know you had. You got a phone and know how to use it. Call nine one one. Really easy. Really during emergencies, but otherwise, be sure you tell an adult. Working with another agency, so this is a part of the requirement for older scouts. Is my audio okay, guys? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. down. All right. Is that any better? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, cool. Sorry, it's left there for a minute. <clears throat> Working with another agency, so for the older scouts and the adults that uh, are trying to complete this award, you're going to have to either call or work with another agency. Some of the requirements tell you that you need to speak with the emergency management agency director, um, EMA. Uh, so it's either called EMA or OEM. So emergency management agency or office of emergency management, every county, the state of Tennessee has an emergency management agency. Call and talk to someone at that agency to help you complete those requirements. Uh, if you're in Rutherford County, the uh, emergency management agency director is Chris Clark has been uh, a friend of mine uh, that I've worked with over the years. Uh, super nice guy, uh, but like I said, every county has one. So uh, just contact them uh, and complete those requirements that were in the, uh, the original links. So uh, the requirements for the older scouts and the adults and for the younger scouts, guys and Cub Scouts, all the guys was born partial portion of it, okay? Uh, is you're going to have to participate, join and participate in a uh, disaster relief organization. Okay, it says join and participate. So I'm going to tell you some ways you can do that, okay, on different levels. Uh, so you've got the American Red Cross, okay? American Red Cross not only does first aid and CPR, but they do disaster response, so shelter operations, mass care. Those are courses that they offer. They have teams within the local chapters. Murfreesboro has a very strong, very large chapter. They also have it in Nashville. Um, the Murfreesboro, heart of Tennessee area takes care of some surrounding counties as well. So they have teams of trained personnel. That, so you guys can join that team, get the training, and participate in those organizations. Okay? That's a requirement. You're going to have to do it. Your local fire department, they don't just need firefighters, okay? They don't just need firefighters. They need all sorts of people. They need administrative people. They need people to 
um, help with stuff around the station. So uh, reach out to your local volunteer fire department. You're not going to be able to volunteer at a paid department. It's going to have to be a volunteer department. They are always looking for members uh, to do firefighting. There's training available, emergency medical response, but there's all sorts of stuff that you can do around the station to support that fire department. So reach out to your local fire department. Uh, there is another option for adults, and that is the Tennessee Medical Reserve Corps. Uh, so you can go to a website, which I will link later, and uh, they look for medical personnel and non-medical personnel to support the state in times of pandemic and disaster. So they're, or they, they've really ramped up that organization right now. I will give you the link to go join that. If you're an adult, you can go join that as a non-medical personnel. If you join, that counts as participation. So that will, that will work for the requirement, in my opinion. Uh, so that is an option. The other option is religious organizations. Southern Baptist Convention, I will link as many religious organiza disaster relief organizations as I can. Uh, for you guys to ha have some options. That's been my whole thing with this this BSA preparedness is giving you the resources you don't have to dig for. I'm talking fast because I don't want to run out of time. Uh, so let's talk about your homework. Uh, your homework is going to be to decide who you're going to do your presentation for. So um, you want to do that for one of your uh, adult leaders. You want to do that for your parents, or if you want to do that for me, just reach out and let me know and we'll do it via Zoom. Uh, it does not have to be a 30 minute speech. It just needs to be you telling me what you did to prepare and what you learned during this course. And that will uh, work for the requirement. So put together those presentations for your family, for me, or your unit. Go ahead and start deciding which organization you want to join if that is the requirement. Red Cross, Fire Department, uh, uh, Tennessee Medical Reserve Corps or any of the religious organizations. Uh, you can pretty much use your imagination with that. Uh, if it's a homeless organization that, that assists the homeless and needy, uh, they work during disaster. So that's something that you can look into as well, but you gotta join and participate. Uh, I have sent links to you guys before on the safety inspection sheets for your units and your activities. So go ahead and print those off because we're fixing to start in-person scouting again. Uh, so that is a requirement. So go ahead and get that ready. So when you go back, you can knock it out. If you um, finish your first aid and CPR, if you have not already, and go ahead and print off the application uh, for your award. That way you've got it. Uh, and uh, we can get this knocked out. So uh, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of additional resources. Uh, because like I said, I'm offering to help you guys be on this award. So let me share what I know um, and let's, uh, let's make a better plan for your family. And if you get really, really excited and get the fever for preparedness, all the better. So like I said, I'm not charging anybody anything. I'm not looking for any money. I'm just willing to help and offer some of the things that I offer. So one thing I'm gonna offer you guys and put in a link is a option to sign up for my company's email newsletter. So basically, you get prepping and prepper tips straight to your inbox. It's all safety and preparedness related stuff. Um, and um, if you guys want to reach out to me, once you complete the award and prove to me that you got the award, I will be glad to offer some packages to you, the consulting packages that my company does, free of charge, no strings attached, no obligations. It's get you for family prepared uh, uh, even more so than you are. Uh, let me double check my notes. That's pretty much it. Remember, there is going to be a meeting uh, for questions and answers. Everybody will be open mic at 11 o'clock. I will email the link for that to you because it's just easier instead of sitting there staring at the computer and not talking. Um, We'll have one more meeting after this uh, to kind of wrap things up. And uh, after that, if you want to contact me to set up a Zoom meeting to go over your preparedness plan, let's do that and get that knocked out. Or you can do it with your family or you can do it with your Dan or your Pat or your troop or whatever. Uh, 
so we'll have one more meeting next Saturday and then we'll be done. Um, and if you guys have any questions on any of the requirements in the meantime, please reach out to me or come to the Zoom meeting at 11. Check your emails right after this ends and we'll be there. So uh, I will also put a link when I email out the notes uh, to sign up for my newsletter. If you don't sign up for it, I'm not gonna send it to you. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything unsolicited. And I'll also give you the website link to my website. Uh, that way you can uh, look over what we do and what we provide, I'm not trying to say anything. We're willing to help you for free, okay? Um, I am proud of you guys and uh, of all the work that you're doing. And uh, we got word from our club master the other day that we're gonna be returning to meetings in about a month. So we're really excited about that, even though we're gonna be filing, uh, do, doing some additional things to keep safe. So uh, follow the CDC guidelines, guys. We are proud of you for the work you're doing. Preparedness is a lifelong journey. Um, and it, it's fun and the, the scout models be prepared. So we've got a good excuse to do this. So check your emails right after this is over for the link to 11 o'clock uh, question and answer meeting. Reach out to me via text, email, Facebook, any of that. Uh, check out our, if you want to join our Safe Prep Facebook page, guys, we put a lot of stuff out on that, very active on social media. It's all prepared and related stuff that'll help you. Scouts, uh, and parents, if you don't know, there is a, a national camp in going on today, all day long. It started at 10. Uh, it goes all the way to like past 8 o'clock tonight. It's a Facebook Live event. I will link that. So if you guys, the scouts, want to check into it today, there's activities for kids. Get your tents out. Set the tents up in the backyard. Set the tents up in the living room. Have some fun. Let's do some scouting. Uh, once again, thank you guys for being here. Y'all are awesome. And uh, if you want to just say hey and get a little more personal, come on over to the 11 o'clock meeting. Everybody will be unmuted and we can not rush through things. So uh, thank you. I apologize for y'all having to put up with the Zoom issues again. Uh, it's just too confusing with two devices streaming at the same time. So y'all are awesome. Uh, do your best. Get your requirements done. Let's get this award knocked out so you can get your Pen, all right? You guys be good, be safe, and be prepared. Watch your emails. Bye, guys.